In addition to vectorized calculations involving columns of a data frame, there are also a number of simple methods that we can apply to do calculations or manipulations of the data frame. One of these methods is sorting. When we were sorting series, we saw that we could use the sort values method, and that same method applies here to columns because they are essentially series. However, since there are a number of possible columns that we could sort by, we need to specify the ones that we want to sort by using the by equals argument. The value of that argument is a list of columns that should be used as the sorting criteria. We can also use an ascending equals true or false argument to control the direction of the sorting. So these are sorted by the values of limited English proficiency, which we converted to percentage previously. However, you'll notice that I did not assign the answer to anything. So if I were to view the values of the school's data frame, they would be the way that they were at the start. If I want the results to persist and not just be shown on the screen, then I must either assign the sorted data frame to the same name, or if I want to assign it to a different name, then I should assign a copy of the sorted data frame in order to break the connection between the copy and the original data frame. Otherwise, all that I will get is a view of the original data frame. If all the values in a row or column of a data frame are numbers, then it's easy to do some simple statistical calculations on those rows or columns. In order to specify whether we want to do these calculations on rows or on columns, we have to specify what's known as the axis of the data frame. The axis that's numbered 0 is the row axis, and so a calculation that goes down a column through the rows is axis 0, or it can also be called the row axis. If we want to perform the calculation along the rows or across the columns, then we would do it on axis 1, which is the column axis. So the name of the axis is the direction that the calculation is going across. So across the rows is the row axis, across the columns is the column axis. The code to calculate the sum going across the axis 0 or across the rows looks like this. It's a sum method, and the argument that I pass in is the axis across which I want to do the summing. So I can specify it either by axis number or by axis name. Let's load some data about carbon dioxide production by state. So if I go along the row axis, that will give me the total for each of these categories. If I go across the columns, that will give me the values for each state. So if I specify the row axis, I will get one value for each column. Notice that the output is the same whether I specify it by axis number or axis name. Also, notice that the output is a series. Because it's going to perform this for each column, the number of values that I have in the series will be the same as the number of columns that I have in the table. That means that the resulting series has the same dimension as the number of columns, and I could therefore add it to the original table into a new row or into a new column. So. If I wanted to sum across the columns, I could use this code here and assign it to a new column named total. And here it is. If I want to sum going down the table, then I could use the row axis and I could use loc to specify a new row label for the row that I want to add. I've chosen to use tail since the total is being put at the bottom of the table. It's quite similar to do several other methods. For example, if I want to calculate the mean, I use the mean method. If I want to calculate the standard deviation, I use the STD method.
So here's the mean for each column. And here's the standard deviation for each column.